In this video, I want to talk about what a shearing map, or sometimes called a transvection, what this does to planar geometry. Now, this is honestly going to be probably the weirdest of all of the geometric transformations we talked about in this lecture here. Uh, and that's just because this one might feel a little less intuitive, uh, but its connection to the triangular matrices is quite solid, and it's worth mentioning. So what, is, what does one mean by a shearing map or by a transvection? Well, the formal definition is that this is going to be a linear map that displaces each point in a fixed direction by an amount proportional to its sine distance from a line that is parallel to that direction. Like I said, that look, sounds kind of weird, right? Um, so what we're going to do is the following. We're going to come over to Desmos to try to illustrate uh, what one means by a transvection. And so the transvections can be determined by some scalar value m. Right now, I've set m equal to zero, and so you don't see uh, you don't see the line right here. Right now, you see that the y-axis is highlighted in blue. Um, I'm going to adjust that in just a second. So as m is allowed to get bigger, we're going to see that this line. Uh, is bending right here. The idea is if we have like this rigid rod of some kind, as M gets bigger, it moves the uh, moves along. And in this point, it looks like it's spinning around the origin, which is correct. Uh, the point of a transvection would be something like the following. Um, if we take a point, uh, let's color it right here. So this is the point 0, 2. The transvection says the following. If you are at 0, 2, you're going to move over here to the point, which is now going to be, uh, where are we along the x-axis? This is going to be 3, 2. This is going to move over to that point right there. On the other hand, if you started off with the point, uh, let's say 0, 1, you're going to move over here to be the point 1, oh, 1 and a half, right? Let me fix that. 1. 1.5, 1. And then if you're at this point up here, let's do like, say, 4. You're going to get 0, 4. This would move all the way over here to this point on the line, uh, which we would end up with 6, 4 right there. And so this is how transvection works, is that you move, uh, you if we're doing a horizontal translation, a horizontal shear right now. So this causes points in the plane to move to the right or to the left. Like, for example, if you're below the x-axis, here you're at the point 0, 4. Uh, negative 2. This actually causes you to move to the left to this point right here. And so we would then get negative 3 comma negative 2 as the point it moves over to. That's why I meant by sine distance. You're going to move a distance, either positive or negative, proportional to where you are with respect to the x-axis. So here is the x-axis. Those things that are above the x-axis are going to move to the right. Uh, like we see with these three examples right here. Things that are uh, below the x-axis are going to move to the left. That's the, what we meant by sign distance. And the things that are farther away from the x-axis will move farther to the right or to the left. So like this point right here was four units above the x-axis. It moved four times as far to the right as opposed to this point right here, which was one unit above the x-axis. And so everything shears. It's like they're, they're, we're bending space here. Um, things above the x-axis bend to the right. Things below the x-axis bend to the left. Uh, so let's, let's clean this thing up a little bit. And so then I want to show you what this thing does to the unit square. Again, let me get this stuff off the screen. There we go. So if I were to turn on the standard unit square, you see this blue little square right there. Nothing has happened to it whatsoever. I'm going to put back my rod to the y-axis there. Whoops. And let's turn on uh, this thing right here. So you now see a square, although the blue line uh, kind of is coming up the left side of the square. As I allow this thing to bend to the right, you can see what's happening to our unit square. The original square was right there, right, in blue. And so as we bend this thing, as we increase this factor of m, so if we shear by a factor of 1, you can see what happens is that this square has been bent. It's, it starts leaning over, uh, forming this parallelogram, uh, which you can see there on the screen right here. 
And so imagine it's kind of like it's kind of like the following idea. If, if you think of your square as like a stack of cards, like you have a deck of cards in front of you, if you kind of push it and it starts to lean, the things on the bottom, that, that is those points that are on the x-axis, they don't move at all. Those things that are uh, above the x-axis will move proportional to how far away from the x-axis they are. That makes a difference. Uh, we're going to zoom in a little bit here. And so as we continue to increase the factor for which we're shearing, this parallelogram will get more distorted, uh, getting stretched in that direction. And then things over on the bottom, below the x-axis, would go the other way around as well. Um, if we were to shear by a negative amount, this causes it to go the other way. And so a shearing map is a map that's going to turn a it's going to turn a rectangle, or in this case a square, it'll turn a, this square, a rectangle, into a parallelogram. And so that's what a shearing map does geometrically. So how does one capture that algebraically? What type of matrices cause these transvections? Well, it turns out these are going to be triangular matrices. Uh, so the matrices I want you to consider are going to be some of the following. Take the upper triangular matrix 1M01. So this is a this is a so-called unit upper triangular matrix. Upper triangular matrix, like so. And the other type we're going to talk about over here, this would be a lower unit triangular matrix. It's unit triangular because you have ones along the diagonal, upper triangular because everything below the diagonal is zero. Uh, like I said, the other one's going to be lower triangular. Now, these type of matrices are, in fact, elementary matrices. These are, these are elementary matrices of replacement type. Uh, this first one right here that's circled on the screen, these are the types of replacement matrices you would use in the backwards phase of Gauss-Jordan elimination. Uh, those, these are going to be the upper triangular matrices. On the other hand, these ones over here, these lower triangular matrices, uh, these are going to correspond to the forward phase of Gauss-Jordan elimination, okay? And so what the difference between a backwards phase and a lower phase, that is the difference between an upper triangular matrix and a lower triangular matrix in this situation is that these matrices will, will shear the plane, but one will do it horizontally and the other one will do it geometrically. And so, for example, consider if we take this upper triangular matrix and we multiply it by the vector x, y, just a generic vector in the plane. What does it do here? Well, when you multiply by the first row, you're going to end up with x plus m times y. And when you do the second row, you're going to end up with a y. So geometrically, what's happening here is, well, if you, if you rewrite this in a slightly different manner, right? You have x, y, the original point, but then you have this m, y, zero. So what's happening is you are adding something or subtracting, depends on the sign of m. You're changing the x coordinate, the y coordinates left inert. The x coordinates being changed, and it's going to be changed by a factor of m, but that m is going to be proportional to the y coordinate. Um, so if your y coordinate's positive, you'll be adding m. If y coordinate's negative, you're going to be subtracting m. And the bigger y is, the bigger the amount you either add or subtract. So this is what we mean by you are going to add an amount proportional to your sine distance from the axis that you're parallel to. So if you're shearing along the x-axis, you're going to add some multiple of the y-coordinate to x, okay? And you see the same thing happening, whoops, you see the same thing happening when you do it with this one over here, the lower triangular matrix. If you times that by xy, you're going to end up with x and you're going to get y plus mx. I wrote it the sum backwards, but that doesn't make much of a difference. So you're going to change the y coordinate proportional to, to x uh, by a factor of m. And so what we then see is that multiplying by these unit upper triangular matrices causes a horizontal shear to happen, and multiplying by a lower triangular matrix causes a vertical shear to happen. Let's look at some examples of shearing. Uh, so let's consider the two vectors in the plane. U will be the vector 2, 1, and V will be the vector 1, 2. And so let's first see what happens if we want to horizontally shear the plane by a factor of 2. Like we saw on the previous slide, if you're going to horizontally shear a vector, that, uh, the, ve the vector plane there, then that's going to come correspond to a unit upper triangular matrix, which if we, fa if we shear by a factor of 2, then that off-diagonal entry is going to be a positive 2. And so let's see what happens to our vectors. If we first do multiplication by the vector u, we take the first row, times it by u, you're going to get 2 plus 2, which is equal to a 4. 
And then if we do the second row times u, we're going to get 0 plus 1, which is a 1. You'll notice that the y coordinate doesn't change when we did this multiplication of the matrix. And that's because if you horizontally shear, the y coordinate doesn't change whatsoever. On the other hand, the x coordinate changed, it increased by a factor of 2. Uh, that is, we added 2 to the original x coordinate. So if we take the vector u, we're going to move two spaces to the right. And that's what this shear does to it. On the other hand, if we take the vector v, which is 1, 2, if you take the first row of the matrix times the vector, you're going to get 1 plus 2 times 2, so 1 plus 4, which is 5. Okay, on the other hand, the second row times the vector, you'll get just back a 2 again. So again, when you horizontally shear, the y coordinate doesn't change. It's the x coordinate that changes. You go from 1 to 4. So if you take the vector 1, uh, 1 2, it's going to move to the vector over here, 5, 2. And so notice the distance between the two vectors, right? U, as it moves to its image, U prime moves over by, by 2 units. But V, when it moves to its image, V prime, it moves over 4 units. And that's because the distance between the x-axis with the points is double, when you go from when you consider v versus u so the farther you are away from the x-axis the farther to the right you're going to move now that happens if you're above the x-axis if you're below the x-axis you actually would move to the left uh, by this shearing map right here so now let's see what happens to the what happens to the unit square the standard unit square you see right here in blue um, it's just the points 0 0 1 0 0 1 and 1 1 um, this shearing map will turn it into this parallelogram you see right here um, 0 0 one zero so the things on the x-axis don't move when you do a horizontal shear on the other hand the point one zero is going to move to to the point uh two one and then the point one one is going to move over here to the point three one you see that you see that happening right there and so that's an example of a horizontal shear um let's look at a vertical shear this time so let's vertically shear by a factor of negative two so it'd be nice to see what a negative shear does well, when you have a vertical shear, this corresponds to multiplying by a unit lower triangular matrix. Those matrices that come from the forward phase of Gauss-Jordan elimination. And so you see something like this. This is the matrix that will shear the plane vertically by a factor of negative 2. When you multiply this matrix by our vectors u and v, remember u is the vector 2, 1, and v was the vector 1, 2, when you multiply by the first row by u, you're just going to get back a 2. The x coordinate didn't change. Uh, you'll notice those things match up this time. Because uh, now that's because we're vertically shearing. Vertical transformations will not affect the horizontal. And a horizontal transformation will not affect the vertical. Uh, the, the two are independent of each other. So if we take the second row times the vector, you're going to get negative 4 plus 1, which gives us a negative 3. So 2, 1 is going to move to 2, negative 3. So u, which starts off here at 2, 1, is going to move 4 units down to the point 2, negative 3. Um, the other one, if we take v this time, you times it by the first row, you're just going to get back a 1, right? The 1, the x coordinate didn't change, it stayed 1. Um, on the other hand, if you take the second row times the vector, you end up with a negative 2 plus 2, which gives you a 0. So the vector point right here, 2 or 1, 2, is going to move down here to become... 1, 0, so move down. And so notice the difference again, right? V moves 2 units down, U moves 4 units down, and that's because now the distance between U, V with the y-axis has now been flopped. So U is twice as far from the y-axis that V is, so therefore U is going to move down twice as much as V does. These things are proportional to each other. And notice things move down because we're doing a negative shear in this situation. If you were to the left of the y-axis, you would actually be moving upward uh, by a factor uh, proportional to how far to the left you are. Things move backwards when you have a negative shear. If we look at the unit square right here, so the usual points, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, and 1, 1. Um, if you move this thing, those things on the y-axis don't move. So 0, 0, and, one, and, and 0, 1 are left Un, unmoved in this process. On the other hand, the point 1, 0 is going to move down by 2, so it moves down to the point 1, negative 2, and the point 1, 1 is going to move down by 2, so it's going to move to the point 1, negative 1. And you see that that's because these points are one unit away from the y-axis, uh, therefore they're going to move by a factor of 2 down.